Welcome to today's 3D print. I just watched the Angus's Maker's Muse um, reply about the PG printer. Um, I think I have some grounds to also reply about the PG printer. I am one of its backers. I have $120 into it. Um, I was hopeful for the PG printer. It's kind of useless today. I mean, it's my the printers I already have now, three years later, uh, will do a lot more than the PG printer would do, but that's beside the point. Let's talk about the actual issue, what happened with the PG printer. I am making my reply based on the assumption that what we've been told is accurate and true. Of course, that could all be a fiction, but I don't think it is. It's, it's weird. I think Ryland took the, the most correct action he could take. A lot of people are asking, you know, why do we have such professionally done videos? Well, because that's what he does. He makes videos like this. So, of course, they're going to look nice. They also did not make these videos after the fact. They made these videos before the fact. Now, there's two facts here. You have when he stole the money and got caught. And then you have now when he announced it on Kickstarter. Before the fact means he made these videos before this event happened that caused him to put all this information on Kickstarter. Um... From what I'm gathering, the business partner, I think they said Dave or David was his name, uh, this is, you know, where a gambler gets in over their head. I'm not justifying it. It's dead wrong. He should be punished for what he did. But I can also see from his perspective how something like this happens. Not to justify it, just to explain it. Because if you don't understand how it works, you can't stop it from happening again. His idea, as flawed as it was, <laughs> was to borrow the $320,000 from the Kickstarter campaign to build his house. Now people say, well, why doesn't he just get a mortgage? You can't. You can't get a mortgage or home equity on land or a partially built house. You can only get it on finished equity. The bank wants to make sure they can secure their money. If there's nothing there on the property, there's nothing to leverage against. It's all a what if in the future. So the plan was to borrow the $320,000, a borrow. <laughs> uh, that's that gets all the gamblers say, I'm just gonna borrow, right? To get over your head. Anyway, borrow the $320,000, build the house. Now, once the house is done, you've got the house. Now you can get a home equity loan on the completed house, leveraging the property for collateral, and then give the money back. And that plan is fine, except for the fact that it wasn't your money to borrow. <laughs> and then, of course, what happens if the house doesn't get finished? Yeah, well, now you've taken the money and you still cannot leverage equity because you have an incomplete house, which a bank will not give you a loan on. Or if they do, it won't be very much. It won't be the amount you took. So that's the situation the guy's in. He took the money without permission, without approval, without any right to shortcut building his house. And then, hey, in a perfect world, house would be finished, he'd get a loan, he'd pay back what he took, and all would be happy with the world. Except that's not what happened. He had problems with contractors, he had problems with this, he ran out of money, overexpended, blah, blah, whatever. The point is, um, Rylan caught it and went, oh shit, what do we do? Now, everybody's saying, you call the police, you have the guy arrested. Great, that's if you want revenge. If you want revenge, that's what you do. You call the police, you have the guy arrested. Fuck Kickstarter and fuck all the peachy printer backers. Sorry for the language, but that's what you're saying do. Because the moment you charge the guy, you lost. That's it. It's over. You lost. You're getting nothing now. Ryland correctly realized this. That, okay, if we charge this guy and have him arrested, great. We'll have our vengeance. And nobody will have their printers. Now, we still don't have our printers, but that does not that's not the point. The point is he realized that in order to actually make these printers, he needed the money back. So he tried to use the evidence of the theft as leverage to get the guy to make right and pay back the loan, which was the only course of action I can see him taking that would result in him getting money to actually finish the printers. And it worked for a third of it. He got $110,000 back. But of course, as with most gamblers, you know, on David's part, he ran out of money, decided, well, I'm not going to make this, so why keep throwing money at something where I'm still going to go to prison? 
so I might as well stop throwing money at it. Sorry about that. I didn't realize there's a five minute limit on these videos. So this will be multi-part. <laughs> um, so the guy defaulted on his payments. Now, before he defaulted on his payments, they made these videos. These videos were made before. The idea was, okay, if you pay this money back, forgive and forget, we'll forget it happened. We get our printers out, we got our money back. We forget this happened. But the videos exist, theoretically, as leverage to say, okay, if you don't pay us back, well, we have the video approving. Also, by doing it this way, he got him out of the company, uninvolved with the company. So he has no longer his control. He has no longer stake. He no longer has a say. That was also important because if it got nasty, well, David is a human being and he's going to want to protect himself even if he is wrong. So he's going to take actions to protect himself. Ryland, I believe, assuming all the information we have is accurate, made the correct decision. I don't see any other path he could have taken that might have resulted in getting the money back. Any path of vengeance, any path of prosecution immediately kills 99.9% .9 of any chance you have of ever getting the money back because the person has to make the money to give it back. Where is this guy going to get $200,000? $210,000. He's not. That's a ridiculous amount of money. Even if it is Canadian, that's a ridiculous amount of money. It's just never going to happen. So, well, now he's going to serve time. Why serve time and pay to serve the time? I mean, you've already lost. You've already paid the debt as far as he's concerned. So the decision by Ryland to attempt this route makes sense. It, it's If I would have had the correct presence of mind and foresight, which he clearly did, I would have done the same thing take a path that at least attempts to salvage the situation, that attempts to get the money back, that has a reasonable chance of success, even if it's very low. And it did work for about a third of the debt. And then he defaulted. As far as Kickstarter's responsibility, I completely disagree. Kickstarter, well, not completely disagree. Part of my problem is the cut Kickstarter takes. It's very large. They take a very big cut. And I think part of that cut should go into escrow to pay for insurance. Um, riskier projects. I don't know how that would work. I mean, how would you get an insurance company to insure that? I, I don't know how that would work. I don't know. But I know Kickstarter is making a crap ton of profit because they get their cut whether the project fails or succeeds and all they have to do is run a website. I mean, no matter how big their website is, that's not a dramatically incredible cost. I mean, $600,000, that means Kickstarter got what? Sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000? I don't know, what, what does Kickstarter get? 10, 20%? So anywhere between sixty and $120,000 Kickstarter got. That's a lot of money. I mean, that'll run Kickstarter for a whole year, I'm betting. It's just a website, for Christ's sake. I mean, <laughs> it's really, there's not really a whole lot of back end to Kickstarter. I mean, they might have a lot of back end for marketing and stuff like that, but the actual cost of running Kickstarter can't be that high. Um, I don't know how to, I don't know how that should work. Maybe 50% of what Kickstarter collects should go toward some method of protecting people. If most of the projects succeed, that 50%, I mean, obviously the 50% they collected from PG Printer won't be enough to pay the PG Printer people back, the backers back, but maybe it will, if it goes into a pool and all of the projects 50% of their take goes into that pool and that pool can be drawn from to pay back people for failed projects you know even if it's only a partial repayment or even if it's a, a credit toward a future Kickstarter or something that would be nice considering how much Kickstarter is profiting but they haven't done anything actually wrong Kickstarter can't be directly responsible for this this would be like um, making the entire banking system responsible for investments that fail. It doesn't make sense. It's not their fault the investment failed. It's not Kickstarter's fault that this PG printer failed, and it's not Kickstarter's responsibility to make it succeed. It would be like a guy running a newspaper ad in the New York Times to start a crowdfunding campaign, and then when it fails, you blame the New York Times because they're the platform he used to get the crowdfunding. That doesn't make sense. It's not the New York Times fault. It's not their responsibility. Even if they create a section specifically for that purpose, it's not their problem. I mean, should they take actions to try to vet stuff? Sure, but to a limited extent, it's not their responsibility. Next video.
Uh, part three. I watched the countdown timer this time. So should Kickstarter do something to protect its users when they're back in projects? Do they have a legal responsibility? No, I don't think so. Do they have a good business sense moral responsibility on some level to attempt to protect their users? Yes, I think they should. It would just make business sense. I don't think you're going to get an insurance company to insure this kind of thing, at least not an extreme cost. So probably the my initial, without having any knowledge about how this stuff works, what their actual profit is. I mean, I'm clueless about this, so I'm just I'm talking right out my ass basically. Um, but it's a kernel of an idea. The if they take 50% of whatever they take and put it into escrow, put it aside as their own self-insurance. Um, enough that people could get, say, 50% of what they paid into a Kickstarter back. I think that could work. Or maybe even 100% for smaller Kickstarters where it's just not that much money. Um, if significantly more of the projects succeed than fail, then that escrow, that self-insurance, will always be larger than what they have to pay out. Um, I don't know. Now... As far as using Kickstarter and what it is, part of the problem is people don't realize what Kickstarter is. It's not a store. You're not going into Walmart and buying a finished product. You are literally donating money to somebody who you would like to see try to make a product. Some of these products are pretty much done already and they just need funding to ramp up production or ramp up scale or who knows, but a lot of these projects could theoretically be pipe dreams from the get-go and all they got is that single prototype. And as we see with several projects, they don't even really know what's involved in actually getting it done until they actually try. <laughs> and you can't actually try until you have the money. So it's kind of a catch-22. Sometimes these guys don't realize what's going to be involved in making one of these things until they try to do it. And they can't try to do it until they have the money. So they can't discover how hard it is until they actually do the funding and actually try to do it. That's why some of these things fail. My philosophy is simple. I do not pay anything into Kickstarter I'm not willing to throw away to lose right down the toilet. I assume whatever I pay is going away. I assume I will never see a single product that they are going to take the funding and then never apply to me ever again. That they will just disappear into the night. That is what I assume. That's the default status. The default condition is you lose everything. If I get something, great. That's a bonus. So you'll never see me funding an expensive Kickstarter because... I simply don't have the financial means to do it. I can't fund a, a $2,000 Kickstarter because I don't have $2,000 that I can spare, that I can, I can't risk losing that kind of money. It's, it's too much money. I make 20 grand a year. <laughs> I deliver pizza for God's sake. And I help run a family business for no money. I, I can't afford to risk that kind of risk. So far, I've gotten pretty lucky. Every one of my Kickstarters has either... Um, successfully delivered, even if it wasn't perfect, or they are still in the process of delivering and it looks pretty good. Um, I mean, my, my favorite one is Sabertron. God, I hope that doesn't fail. I, I that's, that's a Kickstarter that would really break my heart if it failed because I really want that so bad. <laughs> I really want those things. I want to buy more of them. I just, I, wa I want that thing to succeed. But for most of them, you know, if it fails, that's what happens. That's, if, if you can't tolerate losing your money don't spend it it's it's kickstarter i hope ryland is being honest i hope what we hear is accurate if it is i applaud him for making a best effort to try to get this done i hope something happens something turns around and that is able to make something happen i mean i guess the optimal solution at this point would be to win ownership of the house and hope you can sell the house for enough cash to pay back what the guy owes but somehow I don't think that house is worth $210,000 in its incomplete state and I don't think there's a whole lot you can do about it I mean we can hope we'll see maybe we'll get lucky but um, don't be so hard on him unless of course we find out he's lying but I don't think he is just understand uh, hey 120 bucks it's gone <laughs> I'm never going to see it I'm very unlikely to ever see it so don't kill the whole goose for one bad egg you know, whatever that saying is. See you guys later.